Joel Embiid needs surgery. And what does this mean for the 76ers? You are locked on 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. LinkedIn jobs help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free on LinkedIn.com slash Locked On NBA. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked On NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. What's good, Mitch? How you been, bro? Man, I'm good, Keith, man. I'm good. Glad to see you back home on the uh, East Coast, brother. Yeah, yeah. Glad to be back. I'm Keith Pompey. That's my right-hand man, John Mitchell. We're the co-host of the Locked On 76ers podcast. And today we want to talk about Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid is going to have surgery to prepare his lateral meniscus injury in his in his left knee. Um John, I'll be honest with you. This is something that you knew was going to happen. I mean, whenever they say they're going over options, they're weighing options, and then you're hearing the best thing to do is to have surgery uh, for this injury. Um, It's one of those things where you knew it was happening. It just came out and happened. But the thing is, unfortunately, what this means for Joel is, and you knew this was going to happen too, that he's not going to get MVP. He's not going to get all NBA, even though this guy is the best player in the league. Mm -hmm. And then crazy part is every season since this guy has played, he suffered an injury, right? He has yet to be injury free. So you got to worry about that. And then secondly, what does it say about the team moving forward? But by first, what are your thoughts in regards to this guy having to miss time because of this injury? Well, it's the it's the inevitable. We knew that, um, you know, when, when Kaminga fell on his knee, that this was going to be problematic. Uh, I, I guess nobody thought it would be this problematic. He's, you know, surgery is never a good thing, particularly surgery, in-season surgery is never a good thing. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. Like you said, I mean, this guy was playing better basketball than anybody on the planet. Uh, he was, you know, I mean, even even if he weren't in this situation where he required surgery because where he required surgery because of his history, his injury history, I almost thought knew that the 65 game threshold wasn't going to be met. You know, so now here the 76ers are there. What are they four and 10 in games without him? They are. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're falling down the conference standings. They've lost like five of their last six. I've heard some people say that they're a lottery team without Joel, and they very much do look like a lottery team without him. Um, The M.O. has to be, you know, you you almost have to look at the 76ers and say that Joel Embiid is just not a part of this anymore. You know, I mean, every year you're going to have these injuries. You have to improve the team, and you can't, you know, you can't do it thinking about, you know, these are the pieces we'll put around Joel. Because unfortunately, the likelihood, at least from what it seems, is that you're never going to have a healthy Joel. It's never when when the grass turns green and the sun stays up later, Joel Embiid is going to be nursing an injury in all likelihood. Yeah, I, I think when people say it's a lottery team without him, I think that's a little harsh. Um, because lottery teams don't have another all-star point guard on the on the squad. Um You know, lottery teams don't have a guy like Tobias Harris to give you buckets, you know, and things like that. Mm -hmm. I think that, but I do think, I do agree that, you know, they do take several steps back. Like I do, I think that not quite lottery, but they're they're anywhere from, you know, the fifth, sixth, maybe trending to the seventh, eighth seed. You know what I mean? Like they got to, 
they got to try to be a they may be a play-in team or whatever. I but, think they, I think they I think they fall to the play in key. Yeah, they they could fall to the play in like because a lot of, like the NBA is so so you got the halves and the half knots and the and the, then just the awesome mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. then you just got the average teams. Um, you know the tough part about this whole thing is, you know, this is where last year when you looked at it when Joel Embiid didn't play the Sixers had a lot of success. I mean mm-hmm. they even. You know, they, they they were a winning team. At one point, they had a better record without him than they did with him mm. early on this season. He gets hurt in the Brooklyn series. They go to Boston in game one, and James Harden goes off. I mean, he just was baking the Celtics. Yeah. He comes back. They don't look as good, right? This is a time where when everybody said they look better without Harden, um, now you're looking and you see what Harden's doing and, and the Clippers. Now you look at it and you say, this is why James Harden was here, to be able to do things when Embiid is, is, is not around, right? And I think they're going to miss him right now. They really are. They're going to miss him. Not not to say that he had to carry him like he did all the time, but they're just going to miss that. They're going to miss the, the stuff that he brought. So that's kind of like the hurt piece. But when you look at this team, um, you know, you say to yourself, what do they need? What do they need right now? And, you know, it, I, I think a lot of it has to do when is Joel Embiid going to come back, right? If and he's coming back. If, if he's coming back. back. But I think they need a center. And and I know, like, everybody wants to give Paul Reed and they want to give Mo Bamba a chance. I, I think, you know, I, and I'm one of those guys, I think, too. But right now, they're a little bit inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Extremely inconsistent. You know, Mo Bamba, when he's motivated, he comes to play. When he's not motivated, he's just out there, right? Right. Uh, Paul is is good, but sometimes Paul gets into foul trouble, and you can't expect Paul to drop 30 like he did in that game against Denver every night. Right. So to me, and, like, if, if, if MB was coming back, if MB is coming back, um, and you felt like he was, a guy that I would try to go out and get really, really hard, is is Andre Drummond. I mean, I really would like to get him because of the rebounding, because of all the other things that he can bring just to carry me through the postseason. But, I mean, until we get to the postseason. But, again, if MB's not coming back, then you may have to get somebody else. Or or you may just say, you know what? This was a great season. Yeah. Yeah. You just yeah. move on. You know? Yeah, you're right. I mean, I mean, I'm, let's be realistic about Joel, man. You know, um, I, I don't anticipate because of his history. I don't amp- anticipate the news to be very encouraging. You know, if he if he is hurt and has surgery on, and surgery is required, surgery he probably should have. You know, let's be honest, should have had a, a few summers ago. Whenever he had the last uh, in- injuries to that knee. Um, Drummond, and we talked about it here the other day, Drummond would be a good piece, you know, and you have to look at him as just starting center moving forward, at least for this season, you know, yeah. you, you know, if you, um, you know, and, and again, you know, if you have, you know, Paul Reed, Paul Reed makes him is, is a nice small ball center, you know, you can use him. He was perfect for being playing behind Joel because when you went to small ball, like so many teams, do you can put him out there uh you know Mo, Mo Bamba now he's on front street you know he's been hiding for quite some time behind you know his, his high draft let his high draft status but now they're going to need something he can't hide anymore you know it's, it's Mo Bamba come out come out wherever you are and um you know I I, I would definitely and, and we said this you know drumming you bring drumming in here you bring probably still the best rebounder per minute in the league and you put him in that offense um, and you've, you know, you've at least got a big man, you know, right now they're, they're, they're a donut team. They're a complete donut team. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. But then we'll, now we got to talk about what Tyrese Maxey and them have to do to step up. And uh, I'm a, before we do that, I want to talk about when we get back, I want to talk about Joel and B's legacy. What do you think Joel and B's legacy is going to be? Uh, because of all these injuries. But right now, I want to talk to you guys about LinkedIn. 
When you're hiring your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tool to help find the right professionals for your team fast. Makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 80% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. BetterHelp. This show episode is sponsored by BetterHelp, right? It's brought to you by BetterHelp. That's the thing about BetterHelp. BetterHelp is, you know, something that I think that a lot of people need. You know, sometimes people think that they don't, but sometimes when you have stuff on your chest, all you need is just an opportunity to get it off your chest. And that's what better help provides big or small certain things can really start to get to you it's important to let that out especially um, to someone who's unbiased on your life so today i want to say how i really feel about something right you might even be thinking about the same thing this week so that's why i always think that better help is great for you right so what you do is is um is important to start thinking therapy Give BetterHelp a try. try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited for your schedule. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnMBA to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash N-B-A. Do it today, people. Definitely do it today. Now, Mitch, we're talking legacy. You know, what is Joel and B's legacy at this point? Uh, super talented, elite level talent. All I mean, I mean, about his game, there's nothing negative you can say about it. Um, but unfortunately, legacies and legends are made in the postseason. You know, I mean, I remember when Dr. J was, you know, chasing championships uh, and, you know, the Boston Celtics or, the LA Lakers would always get in the way. And people are like, man, this great guy, this great player from the ABA, the doctor guy who revolutionized the game and took it above the rim. Is he going to be a player whose legacy is that he never won a championship? And eventually he did win one with Moses Malone in 1983. Um, if you look at Joel right now, um, it's, it's a guy who's just haunted by his health. He's, he's haunted by his inability to be healthy during the season, you know? I mean, you create your legacy during during the regular season, but you but you shine it and buff it and make it something that can sit on a trophy mantle with what you do in the postseason. Um, and, 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 and you know what? I, I, I'm not hating on him at all because your health is your health. Um, but if he's, he's just never available or at his best, when it comes time to, you know, to potentially win a championship. And um, it's very disappointing. I'm not, I'm not willing to close the door on them on him this year, because I think um, even, even if he comes back next season, I think, you know, Dow Moore can really do something. He can, Dow Moore needs to make trades. Dow Moore needs to, you know, we've heard all this stuff about from the analytics crew. Dow Moore is this, Dow Moore is that, but Dow Moore is not one jack. And if he can, you know, with all this cap space they're going to have next year, you know, when you come back next year, you're going to have to rest Joel. Uh, MVP and postseason honors be damned. You know, you're going to have to do all those things. Um, and, and and we'll see, you know, if, if, you know, somehow he can, you know, get beyond the second round. His team can get beyond the second round and perhaps win. Uh, get to the finals and win it because he's got the taste. Like I said, he's the best player on the planet, and that's unquestionable right now. But he just, he's, you know, I mean, you have players like, you know, 
I'm not comparing him to Sam Bowie because obviously Sam Bowie didn't have the career anywhere near that Joel did. But these big men, when they get hurt, they don't get better as they age. So I, you know, I'm I'm not very uh, I'm I'm not extremely optimistic about what his future may be and what his legacy may be. I'm hopeful for him because I mean, when was the last time we saw somebody this talented? Um, but yeah, yeah, right now it's, it's an unfulfilled legacy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that's the problem with the injuries and, and everything like that. Uh, you know, you, you kind of feel sorry for the guy because, you know, the regular season, he's one of the most exciting guys. But at the end of the day, it's like he has yet to be healthy for a playoff. Um, right. And his numbers are worse in the postseason than they are in the regular season. And I think a lot of that has to do with the way – teams are of course defending them and then secondly he's he hasn't been healthy mm-hmm. um i mean even when he was in the bubble people were thinking he was healthy but man he was dealing with like ankles and bad ankles and everything like that back then for that one season and and that's the year they ended up getting swept so it was um you know it, it's it's unfortunate for him um you're right you know daryl Morey, it, they got their work cut out for him but my question is, who are you going to bring in? Like right now, like if people saying they can make a trade, I don't even know if. I mean, what are you going to do? Like, who are you going to trade? I mean, who are you going to get? You know, there, there are a couple guys who were out there, who were quality players that they could have gone after, they didn't. But I feel like a lot of that was because they didn't really have the assets to get the guys anyway. Like, if we're going to be real, um, but you know, it, it's just. It, is is a is an uh, unfortunate situation, and the one the disappointing thing about this injury this season, if you're a Sixers fan, is this was the one year that you said to yourself the regular season meant something because it was a different coach, it was a different feel. Joel Embiid was having his best season of all time, mm-hmm. so you felt like it was different. But then it comes down to it, and basically, it's all the same. It's right. just the same old stuff over and over again and now it's like that roller coaster and how that roller coaster always goes is they're always trending and trending and trending and the 76ers have always played their best basketball since i've been covering the team in january like once they after they stopped tanking in january they were the talk of the nba and then come down near the all-star it starts like you know coming down a little bit and and now you know, it, it looks a little different. We're going to learn a lot about Tyrese Maxey. It's going to be a whole lot easier to defend. Mm-hmm. You know, the knock on him in the past was that he was a great guy, but with lesser talent on the floor, could he lead a team? Could yeah. he do it? Now, the Indiana game, not Indiana, the Utah game, he was great, 51 points, 51 points. The next night they didn't have Tobias Harris. He shot eight for 23 from the field, right? So – you know, it's, it's one of those things where, to him, we're going to learn a lot about them. Now, what is it? Do you make a trade now? Like, you know, before you got these other guys, do you look at it like these guys are great locker room guys right now? We got to get Maxi right. We got to do this. Are you going to make a trade? Because they can, they're the guys who can help Maxi out as yeah. far as leadership qualities. You're going to bring somebody else in now? You know, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. But. Well, Keith, let me ask you, what, what what do you think the goal is for this team now? Do you is, is it okay? It, it was get beyond a second, it was get beyond a second round. Do you think there's a trade out there now that can get them beyond the second round the way they're presently constructed? No, uh, the way this team is constructed and the way it's always been constructed was always for Joel and B. You got to is heavily that is heavily dependent on Joel and B. I mean, you know, we look at this. I mean, they've been getting boat raced by certain teams recently. Yeah. Like they went on that West Coast trip, and cor- correct me if I'm wrong. The only team on that West Coast trip that had a winning record, well, it was Indiana, and they was, but they was trending down. And Denver, yeah. all the rest of them were losing squads, and they were getting yeah. lose, they were getting beat down. So yeah. you know, what I mean, I, I don't see it. And that's I, where that's where that lottery that's where that lottery yeah. team conversation comes from. Yeah, man. yeah, so, yeah. I, I, I don't. Yeah, I just don't see it. I don't see it at all. I think that, you know, and but the, but again, I hate to say it. They're not going to get a pass, though. 
Yeah. People are going to look at them and like, yo, this was a year you're supposed to get out of the second round. They're not going to get a pass by this. They're not, not at all. But look, I want to talk to y'all about Fandle. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from Fandle, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on, on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets, right? FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which player will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports sport partner of the NFL. Yeah, Mitch, I, I, I don't know. Like, we talked about that. Like, yeah, I mean, you make a great point. That's where the, the thing comes in um, as far as, like, a lottery team. But – I just don't see them going far without them. But at the same time, you know what? This is another year where, you know, everyone said that this team was going to do this, this team was going to do that, and and, and they didn't. And then you know, the one thing about Joel, and I guess where you say we got to see if he comes back, is because Joel's a guy who easily gets out of shape. Easily. Easily gets out of shape. So it's a matter of, after he's a hundred percent, you got to go through the training camp process. You got to do all this other stuff. I mean, just for him to get back in optimum shape, right. For that to happen. And then he may say, you know what, it might be just best for me to, to work on me, make sure everything is hundred healthy and then yeah. just come back next season. You know, yeah. and, and I'm, at this point, I'm okay with that. You know, yeah. I, I'm okay with that. And I think the fan base has to be okay with that as well. Uh, this guy's your future. He's the, the 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 last remnant of the failed process. He um, and, and he honestly he needs to take a book a page out of Tim Duncan's book. Now he's at the point in his career, we you know we 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 are conservative when we list when we see him listed at two eighty because you see him every day. You know that body has more than two hundred eighty pounds on it. It's time to see Joel. If if you're going to prolong your career with bad rickety knees and a bad body. You know, it's, t- it's, it's time to start saying hello to 200, to a legitimate 265, 270 pound max, Joel MB. Yeah. That's just, that's just where he is. You know, if, if he doesn't, and, and Tim Duncan did it. Tim Duncan used to talk about all the time how he saw players like Patrick Ewing gaining weight and slowing them down. Um, Joel's got to come down now. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's time to take your career extraordinary. Not that he doesn't. But it's time for him to take his career extraordinarily seriously and and, and preserve because God's blessed him with gifts that I haven't seen in a big man, you know, in, in, in maybe forever. You know, he may, I mean, he just on a pure talent standpoint, I don't know anybody, any big man that comes to mind that had the reservoir of talent and skills that he had. Yeah, he is special. He is special. But, yeah, he has to do something. But, um. They got a lot of work in, in store for them right now, a lot. And, you know, it's funny. Today, you know, they're going to talk and everybody's going to like, yeah, we're, you know, we're motivated. We're excited. We're going to do this. Nah. We got them. Nah, this is a, a thing. I mean, I mean, you look at it. This They went and played this West Coast trip, and it was supposed to be an easy trip. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, the one thing is, you know, I was excited to go out there and, and cover it because I wanted to see what he was going to do against the Joker, right? Mm-hmm. That's the reason why you went there. But they started the trip in third place, a half, basically a half a game behind the Milwaukee Bucks who were in shambles, right? Mm-hmm. At the coach fired, the yep. players came on. This Bucks team was losing games, right? Um I mean, losing. Even when Doc came, they were losing. Yeah. Again. yeah. But then you look at it, the Sixers go from third to fifth, mm-hmm. right? 
I mean, the my I'm not the the Cleveland Cavaliers, and then the uh, you got the Cleveland Cavaliers, and then you got the New York Knicks who surpassed them. Mm-hmm. When you look at this right now, they have a losing record against the Cavs, the Knicks, the Pacers, and the Miami Heat. Now the Miami Heat is 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 trending in the wrong direction. Yeah. When you look at it, you know the Sixers they're three and a half games uh, ahead of the Indiana Pacers, so you know they have some room. But the Pacers own the tiebreaker, mm-hmm. so it's one of those things where you got to stay ahead of them right now because the Pacers own the tiebreaker. So the Sixers, you know they they they're, they're five and five in their last ten, um, but we forget. They had a real nice winning streak going on before they went on this road trip. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, they had a really nice winning streak going on. Six and straight, they, right? Yep, six straight. Yeah. Straight. yeah. Yep. They had a nice winning streak. And now it's one of those things. They were the hottest team in the league. Like, again, January, they look good. So they have their work cut out for them. And they need something. But, you know, again, you, you say to yourself, this is where these moves in this off the past off season, when all everybody was going out getting these free agents, and the Sixers were signing dues to the minimum, mm-hmm. and that's where you look at it and you say, "Man, they could have had some other guys if they yeah. had more money." You know, they could have. You know, they could have. So, they're in a tough spot right now, man. Yeah. Yeah, well, and, and one guy we we didn't talk about. I, you know, I've always been saying I like Dejounte Murray, but I always like Dejounte Murray um, playing alongside and beating Max because my whole thing was, you know, Dejounte gets here, you can you can really move um, Maxi off the point and let him run around and you know and, and get great looks at the basket and penetrate. Um, but now I'm, I'm not so far, you know, I'm, I'm not so far off on DeMar Rose and bringing, the, the, you know, just for this season, bring DeMar Rose in here, you know, a guy who's got the mid range games, a guy who we know is a dog, you know, um, anything because the season is definitely slipping away from them. Like the guy is for, interesting. The guys we also talked about OG Pascal Siakam, all guys that we wanted for this, we, we said were good fits for this roster and will be good fits for them right about now. They missed on. You know. Yeah, the only question about DeMar DeRozan to me is, is does is DeMar DeRozan going to want to stay? Right? Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the only thing. You know, mm-hmm. the thing about DeMar DeRozan is, and, you know, different things for different people, but, you know, Dame Lillard and DeMar DeRozan and, and uh, T. Stiebel all have the same agents. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that Dame didn't want to come here, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if you know now, but you got to realize Dame had more options than most, right? Yeah. So you can pick and choose. Like ultimately, you're going to go wherever you get traded to, right? But it's one of those things. But the thing is, my thing is, if you give up, you're going to have to give up something for Demar. And what happens if he's like, "I'm out. I don't want to be here." Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the only question. That's the question. And it's a, it's a tough spot. A and B's injury history. Like do you want to be here in a team where you feel like you're going to be rebuilding, and 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 that's and then what about what type of role are you going to have? I think did, did I hear you say the R word, Keith. What rebuilding? I mean, I you know I don't yeah I don't know if they see the thing is the rebuilding thing is going to have to deal with what they can do in free agency right now, right? Mm-hmm. And but I have yet. I mean, who knows? Maybe they can do something, but. Outside of the James Harden and the Ben Simmons trades, what moves, major moves have they made? Nothing. No. So, I mean, so do you think all of a sudden they're going to make something this summer? That's why, you know what, the Dow, it's time for the, it's, it's time to revisit the Dow Moore legacy. You know, look, you know, what is, what is he going to do? He's, he's the most important cock right now. It was Joel MB. It's not Joel MB anymore. Right now, the most important cog. Is Dow Moore, a guy who, you know, we've, you know, we know he's active in the trade market and anticipate he will be active. You know, you know, what do you do? Do you salvage this season or, or, or is it just another, is it year 41 since their last title? Yeah, might be year 41. Mm-hmm. Yeah, might be year 41. But look, y'all, we want to thank y'all for listening, right? We want y'all to have a, um, a great day but before we go 
I just want to share something with y'all. Um, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts on Locked On Plus, our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. We want to thank you all for listening. Um, know that you can get this podcast wherever you get your podcast at. We're free and available. We're also on YouTube. But again, have a blessed day. And we want to thank y'all for listening. Peace. Peace, y'all. <clears throat>